Now this is the topology that we're going to build in the upcoming videos. I've got my recording machine connected to a Cisco router, which is connected to the internet. The Cisco router in turn is connected to an MSR or HP A-series router, which in turn is connected to a 5800 A-series switch. We're going to connect the switch to another 5800 switch using two 10 gig Ethernet ports. Both switches will be connected to edge switches, which are E-series Pro Curve switches, both 2600s. A PC will be connected to each Pro Curve switch. The topology will change during the videos, but this is the final scenario. I'd like to show you how to set up technologies such as IRF, link aggregation or bridge aggregation, access ports, trunk ports, inter-VLAN routing, routing protocols such as RIP. So we have a lot of work to do to set up this topology. In this video, I'd like to connect to the console of the MSR and show you how to configure basic settings on the router. Then I'll show you how to configure the switches. We'll connect the devices together and build this topology. Now I've already mentioned the cables used to connect to the console of A-series devices. So this is just going to be a brief recap. The console port of A-series devices uses an RJ45 connector. The console cable is a rollover cable. In other words, pin 8 goes to pin 1, pin 7 to pin 2, 6 to 3, and so forth. One side of the connection is the DB9, which connects to your PC, and the other side, once again, is an RJ45 connector. So here's an example of my laptop connected via a USB to COM converter plugged into the console cable, which in turn is connected to the console of the switch. Here's an example connecting to an MSR or multi-services router. Once again, the DB9 connects to your PC, RJ45 to the console of the router. The router has both a console port and an auxiliary port. An auxiliary port or aux port is used to connect a modem to the router for out of band management. Please note, however, for the initial configuration of the router, you have to connect via the console. HPA series devices are locked down. You cannot telnet to the device. So we need to do an initial configuration via the console to set up the router. Now routers, unlike switches, have on off buttons. On the low end switches, the switches are powered automatically when power is plugged in. That does change on higher end switches. But in this example, with our MSR 3020, you can see we would need to plug in the power, then turn the router on after connecting to the console. And as soon as we've done that, we'll be able to view the output through our terminal emulation program. And I'll show you that in a moment. Before booting up the router and showing you the output, I just want to discuss the hardware in a little bit more detail. On the back of the router, there are two Gigabit Ethernet ports, Gigabit Ethernet 0 and Gigabit Ethernet 1. You can see here that when the LED is yellow, the link is running at 10 or 100 megabits per second. If it's green, it's running at a gigasecond, and when it flashes, it's active. These are router ports, and I'm going to talk more about switched versus routed ports, also known as bridge ports versus route ports, in upcoming slides. Please note, this is a router, not a switch. So these gigabit Ethernet ports can have IP addresses assigned directly to them. You can also insert a switch module. In this case, we've got a four port switch module, which allows the router to act as a switch. Multiple modules can be inserted in the router, but in this case, we've got a single switch module. These are layer two interfaces, whereas the gigabit ethernet interfaces built into the router are layer three interfaces. IP addresses are assigned directly to the gigabit ethernet ports, but IP addresses on the switch module 
are assigned via a VLAN interface. I'll show you the configuration in the upcoming videos. The operating system of an MSR or RADA is stored on a flashcard. So you can upgrade the operating system either by using FTP or as an example by popping out the flashcard, putting it into a compact flash reader and copying an operating system directly onto it using Windows. You can also upgrade the flashcard to one with a higher capacity. Please note this acts in a very similar way to a normal flashcard where multiple operating systems and multiple files can be stored on the compact flash. But without further ado, let's connect to the console of the router, boot the router, and let's view the output on the screen. The default settings for the console on HP A-series routers and switches is as follows. So you need to set your terminal emulation software to use the following settings. Speed is 9600 bits per second, 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit, and no flow control. So these are the settings that you would require in PuTTY as an example. You can see the speed is 9600 bits per second, data bits is 8, stop bits is 1, there's no parity, and there's no flow control.